Hi, John here. Saturday today, um, the 21st of October 2017. Look what I've got for dinner. The juice from $19.84 down to $9.92. I could have got a lot of them. And then I've got some fillets here from $10.04 down to $5.02. Some bone, bone fish. I can't read. Trevally. Look at that. Nice, eh? I'm going to have something good. I've got some spinach in there as well. So, today, I've just come back from Manukau City. Countdown. they got a special on, on um, the scallops. I went and got some yesterday. Squaff that lot up and went to, went to go back and get some more. Because they're so nice, so I'll take them one by one. And <clears throat> just like oysters, just beach diving for them. So that's my dinner and some spinach and some hot chili noodles. Real hot. Uh, make me feel, feel fighting for it. I went up to the gym this morning and I'm down to 83 kgs. That's from 94 kgs down. I'm really pushing the pushing the exercise up there. Really push the machines. Um, and my heart is pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm taking readings every day. Once at least at least five, six times a day. And especially when I eat food and after food so I know I can tell what's making my blood pressure go up. The most thing that makes my blood pressure go up is doctors, nurses, and big hooies, meetings with Maori. Those are the three things that make my blood pressure go up. The things that make it go down are hot chili noodles, real hot, real, 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 real hot, that you can't swallow. Only those brave people. And fish, uh, seaweed. Spinach, these are things that I eat. Spinach, and what else? Um, um, and fish, and fish. And that's about all I need to eat. I have a little bit of uh, chicken, but not much. Um, but I've given away pork and big fatty meats, and I feel better light. So at the moment, I'm. Um, um, oh, did I turn my computer off? Yes, I did. Oh no, um, I usually have pulled the plug out and <coughs> turn it right off. So um, at the moment I'm doing the Framing the Laws to take up on Wednesday next week, 24th. I'll be heading up to Kaikohi. Uh, I stay up at uh, uh, one of the Komatuas up there, uh, Morris, Morris Baker. Uh, I have a bit of session with him on his farm. and. Just tell him what to do. Stay with him um, the, while I'm up there. Uh, go up on the mana bus. So I find it better on the mana bus. It's only nineteen dollars to go up and twenty-two dollars come back. Uh, so the car cost me about one hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy dollars. So there's a big, big uh, lot of difference, and I can relax in, on the computer, on the internet, on the on the mana bus. Um, and uh, so that's 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 nice, and take some films at the same time. Um, <clears throat> so you'll see on my site, um, actually got some documents there on the Australian um, federal state government. I'm following their logic, and um, to form and frame our acts of a King's Bench Court because we're exclusive when it comes to this flag. It is a federal state government flag and a bank flag at that. So we have everything of a chief's native flag and all these laws that um, using King William's the fourth acts of Parliament. <coughs> you'll see here, you see this is the Court of Chancery, that's our King's Bench Court, that's the um, 
um, <coughs> quart identifiers <coughs> I'm using. <coughs> New Zealand style, law style guide. So I'm looking through those. The King, as the executive magistrate, has the right of promulgation, pro pro promulgating to the people all acts of state and government. This gives him the exclusive privilege of printing at his own press or that of his grantees all acts of parliament, proclamations and orders of council. 2. As supreme head of the church he has a right to the publication of all liturgies and books of divine service. 3. He is also said to have a right by purchase of the copies of such law books, grammars and other compositions as were compiled for translating at the expense of the Crown. And upon these two last principles combined, the exclusive right of printing and translation of the Bible is founded. So I'm following uh, exactly what a king's allowed to do, goods and chattels then are totally forfeited by the conviction of high treason, which is what has happened with New Zealand and, and John Key. Um, I'm, I'm quoting this, I'm, I'm citing this here. Now listen here, for John Key's case that we did in Epsom in Te Ungawaka Marae, magistrate, Native Magistrate Court, on the 29th of September 2017, we tried him and the landowners of Cook Street and 19 others in that court, this native court, with this flag and the chiefs, the paramount chiefs, commercial landowners as far as we are concerned by law. Goods and chattels then are totally forfeited by conviction of high treason or misprison of treason, of petty treason, of felony in general and particularly of felony des, des se, and of manslaughter, nay, even by conviction of excusable homicide, by outlawry for treason or felony, by conviction of petty licensee by flight in treason or felony, even though the party be acquitted of the fact by standing mute, that's what they're standing, mute, when arraigned of felony, that's why I'm accusing John Key and all the politicians here, of treason and felony <clears throat> by drawing a weapon on a judge or striking in one of the presence of the King's Court by primary by pretended prophecies they're pretending upon a second conviction by owing they've been convicted enough times by owing oh, get out of the way I can't see behind this thing I'll wait for it to go away by owing of money won at gaming, all these, while well, they're playing games in the, in the Parliament in Wellington, all these offences, as will more fully appear in the fourth book of these commentaries, induce a total forfeiture of goods and chattels. That's what we're doing. We're seizing Cook Street <coughs> and all its chattels for the crimes that have been committed on that land block, on land transactions. And this forfeiture commences from the time of conviction. That was back in 2008, when I first took Cook Street on. They're going to have to pay for every day they have stopped me from going on that land block. And this forfeiture com commences from the time of conviction, 2008, not the time of committing the fact. As we have fact, um, fact cited evidence in videos, YouTube videos and statements that I've made as in forfeiture of real property, those are real property for chattels are of so vague and fluctuating a nature that to affect them by any relation <coughs> back would be attended with more inconvenience than in the case of landed estates and part if not the whole of them must be expended in maintaining the delinquent between the time of committing the fact and his conviction, yet a fraudulent conveyance, there is that word, conveyance of land, of them to defeat the interests of the Crown is made void by statute 
13 Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, C5.13. There we go. That is what I'm using. I'm citing that on Cook Street and against Jonky and his estates. Just what I've just put there this morning. So I'm going to draft the laws uh, again and quote those um, at um, Hokianga <coughs> and force them on Jonky and all those 19 people, 21 people that I have convicted as a sheriff inside that native grand jury court uh, magistrate in Epsom, Auckland, New Zealand. <coughs> court of Session 1830 Mortgage, that land and its mortgage. I won't, I've explained this before, that map. Uh, today's Saturday. Right, here we go. That's what I'm doing today. Today, Saturday 21st of October 2017, I am framing the laws for the Whakameninga, six regions on that map, for the original provinces of New Zealand with Moriori Paramount Chief Referefa Manukau, direct descendant, British commercial landowner, transfer in Awaroa Native Magistrate Court of Admiralty, Awaroa Bank, on his 10-acre land block in Helensville, Kaipara, south-west Auckland, New Zealand. Linked to Edinburgh Magistrate Court of Admiralty, Bank of England in Scotland, with Paramount Chief Tira Waikato, Whare Herehere Manukau Crown, Land Patent, Seller of New Zealand, and the Magistrate Lieutenant William Simons, 23rd Regiment, 1820-1830, Sale and Purchase Agreement in private contract with King George IV, Crown, Land Patent, Buyer. So the seller is... Referee for Manukau's ancestor, Te Rawaikato Wharehere in Manukau, in 1820. In Westminster, the buyer is King George IV. Westminster Magistrate Court of Admiralty Bank in Westminster City, Parliament, Britain, UK. I am the paramount chief executor of the Moriori Manukau Commercial Private Contract Trust in Aoroa and Edinburgh, Scotland, UK. Note, the Auckland province took in the three native magistrates Admiralty Bank Courts under Captain James Reedy Clendon, Royal British Navy resident, resident of Okiato Native Magistrate Court, Bank Kororareka in Russell, Bay of Islands. 2. Awaroa Native Magistrate Court Bank in Helensville and Whakawhitira Native Magistrate Court in Hiruharama, Mount Hikurangi, Waiapu District, East Cape, Tikitiki, St. Mary's Church, 1831, births, deaths and marriages, bonds on the stock market, New York under King William IV, Admiralty, jurisdiction, 1830-1837, sovereign monarch title. Well, there you go. There's the map of the province of Auckland that stretched all the way from north down to Gisborne, down here to Topo, across, across here, and all that area there was the Whakawhitira uh, Native Magistrate Court was on our land blocks in Waiapu area down here on the east coast and the Awaroa Bank Magistrate Navy Native Magistrate Court was here in Kaipara in Helensville, Awaroa and up here in the Bay of Islands was the other third Magistrate Court the Okiato Native Magistrate Court so Okiato Native Magistrate Court here in Kurarika, Russell <coughs> Bay of Islands. That's the first one. The second one was Aurora Native Magistrate Court and John Rogan in and Moi Manukau in Helensville, uh, Kaipara South, uh, Kaipara Harbour, and the third um, Native Magistrate Court was here in Fakafitira in the Waipu area of the East Cape uh, in our land blocks. Okay. So, so that's the only three magistrate courts in New Zealand at that time. And all the Pakis were hidden down here. That's all the fighting was in here, in this area here. Okay, so, and then we go back up here. I'm framing the laws, yes. And our flag there with King William IV and Maui standing in London. You'll notice he's got his eyes in place, so you can see nobody's eyes back in. 
the original Paramount Chiefs Commercial Trading Bank Native Magistrate Court Martial Law jurisdiction came into legal effect on Friday the 29th of September 2017 as priv private contract law established inside Te Ungawaka Marae Native Magistrate Court Bank Ruling Authority over New Zealand and Pacific Islands Country Doctrines of Discovery, Moai Crown, Earth Gods Title, Memorial Titles of King William III, King William IV and King George IV, St. Patrick's and St. Mary's Church Memorial Titles, and Moriori Manukau Paramount Chief's Title Transfer to King George IV, 1820 to 1830, and King William the Fourth title from 1830 to 1837, founding of New Zealand Discovery title, 20th of March 1834 flag, and sovereign authority jurisdiction of the Paramount Chiefs of New Zealand, 6th of February 2017. In a 21-gun salute, 2011 pages of the Native Magistrate Court Acts of King William the. 4th, 1837, Westminster Magistrate Court and Parliament, Britain, UK, to Tuingwa, to Te Ungawaka, Marae Native Magistrate Court, Epsom, Auckland, New Zealand, Moai Crown, Federal, State, British, Commonwealth, Government of the World, Dual, British, UK, New Zealand, Pacific. <coughs> Ireland, two-party, private contract, trading flag of Admiralty State to State New World Government Partnership. So that's our, our, our flag there, the one that's behind me here. And our authority to use it now, all 111 pages of my Crown Federal State Law is here in the comments section below to download first 40 of first 40 pages, this, then singly to 111 pages. There we go. <coughs> So that's all I wanted to do the video of today. The fact that we are a court of chancery in the King's Bench Native Magistrate Court here in New Zealand, um, exercising our right to uh, enforce our laws. Up in Kaikahi, we'll be forcing the laws uh, and framing the acts passing them on the 25th of October 2017 on the government. So that by the time we got to Titi Marai on the 28th, they've already been served um, notice from that um, hearing uh, in uh, Waitaha <coughs> headquarters in the middle of the street in Hokianga. Okay, so we're going back to Port Hoa's place again. Uh, from the 25th to the 27th and then go to Titi Marae on the 27th overnight for the Declaration of Independence Day on the 28th but we're calling it a Declaration of War flag of 1834 back to 1820 period of contract. That's a contract flag. This is a commercial trading bank private contract flag of a king. He put all those laws together with the Bank of England Act of King William III and the Power Note of King William III, the St. Patrick's Eight Point Star, at the same time the municipalities in um, Belfast, St. Patrick is buried there, that's his hometown and my ancestors there, the Rogans and the Cosgroves, <coughs> lawyers and the Rogan judges come from there in Belfast. Protestant. So I'm, I'm Protestant of the uh, St. Patrick's Church and also Church of England in the St. Mary's Church in Scotland, the Holy Grail underneath the church and our uh, Tiki Tiki uh, St. Mary's Church 1831 that put the first of the birth, deaths and marriage certificates together on the stock market in New York with King William. He set that all up in the 50 years of his Navy service in New York. He was posted there as a uh, magistrate and a, a prince. Uh, and so that's his legacy to us. And uh, that's what I'm saying. Our authority is the A-point star on this flag 
in the four corners of the earth with the blue being the sea, uh, king of the sea, king of commerce, and the king of the royal revenue of conquered lands belonging to the, those kings, the king William the third, king George the third, king George the fourth, and his brother King Ernest Augustus the first and King William the fourth. Those are the kings that belongs to us in this flag, Dutch. Dutch straight to here, Zealand Dutch name. Okay, in East Island that all those Moai statues were standing. And when King William the Fourth died and Queen Victoria took over, the Moai started falling over. They started banging them over and took this big one to Britain, to England, and that's my own title that she stole in 1868. I want back. I'm going there to claim him back because that's my spirit, earth god, law, L-O-R-E, deeds of truth that has been stolen. God says, thou shalt not steal. They've stolen it with King William the Fourth. Admiralty Court Martial Law Flag. We're going to use this Admiralty Court Martial Law Flag of King William the Fourth and King William the Third on all of you pirates. That's what it was given to us for. For pirates who got in the way of third party. So you're all third party um, attached to each other and liable each other in New Zealand and the, the government that's there now you're going to fall apart in pieces because it's a humbug parliament. It, it's got no meaning. It's just been bodgy and no substance in it. No seal of the court, no seal of the Queen, no seal of Westminster, no nothing. We've got more going in this flag and this sheriff's badge on my hat than they have all to give to rub two stones together. They have really got no titles to the land or no challenge. All silent. I just read out those those citations against all those politicians and the police and the judges and the lawyers and the barristers, the whole lot of them. Church and state, ministers, bishops, priests, the whole lot of you are caught up in the same fraud that you've shared our flag that got you on these lands in the first place. We can get you off the land. That's what these paramount chiefs are. We are now paramount chiefs. I'm one, Bundy Waitai is the other, Hiruini Karaka is the other, and Manahi Parapara Mohini is the other. Four paramount chiefs have the legal right to kick anybody off this land and seize everything right now as I speak on this video, YouTube, I'm making this a cited evidence case against John Key, Panama Papers, and defrauded the public of New Zealand, and <coughs> bank fraud, and also treason. The same as the Queen and her treason. <coughs> You're up in front of everybody in the world on my sites my Facebook sites, my YouTube sites, my websites and two Facebook sites just for you, John Key. And all your thugs in there. You're going to get it. Judith Collins and um, Paula Bennett. You're all going to go crashing down and lose everything that you own. Doesn't matter. You broke the law of New Zealand. <coughs> Section um, Crimes Act 61, Crimes Act 51 of New Zealand, and you broke our King's laws and this flag of jurisdiction over you, Vice Admiral or Humbug Admiral. You've got no Prince Philip now, he's gone, he's run away. The Queen has run away, <coughs> and she's acting de facto away from a crown position. I watched the video this morning on Facebook and she, the, the crown is sitting on a table, not on her head, when she's making statements for the parliament. It's not real. She's not representing the people she's supposed to be. 
She's there for her own private business. That's why she puts the crown on the table, as if it doesn't matter where it goes. But it's not on her head. That's what I'm saying. She doesn't represent anybody. We're more right with this and this flag over the Queen. I'm going to sack her from our trust, the Queen Victoria Trust. Seize that lot. Seize all the gold. 300 million tons of gold, metric tons of gold in the Caribbean. And 170 million metric tons of gold in the Philippines and in other countries. We're going to seize all that lot with this, the King's flag that got it in the first place with that authority in commercial world from King George IV, from King William III, the father of King William IV and King Ernest Augustus I and King um, George IV. Okay? That's how it works. We have that title. Okay, that's all for now. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, you know. It's stuck into these, these funnels. Beautiful. Beautiful. $19.84 down to $9.92. For that, for the scallops. And $10.04 of, $10 of down to $5.92 for the fish. Raw fish, man. Okay, bye.